After studying this module, we shall be able to know about objectives and their significance, understand the balanced scorecard approach to goal setting, know about the critical success factors and key performance indicators, distinguish between strategic and financial objectives. Now we will introduce this topic. For every organization, setting goals and objectives is very crucial for not only its growth but its survival as well. It is very important for every organization to put together a comprehensive strategy and translate such a strategy into reasonable and practical goals and objectives. Objectives and goals provide an essential vehicle for growth organizational identity and understanding the business direction of an organization. The terms objectives and goals are often used interchangeably. Goals are referred to as objectives, objectives are referred to as goals. Objectives are the desired ultimate end results that are to be accompanied by an overall plan. The vision, mission and the business definition defines the philosophy of an organization to be adopted in the long run. The goals and objectives are set to achieve them. Goals are the broad category of financial and non-financial measures that the organization sets for itself and the objectives are the ends that specifically state how the goal should be accomplished. Objectives are the mainstream of goals whether specifically stated or not. This module aims at providing understanding of the essential differences between the two terms. With a clear understanding of what these terms mean, you will be able to write and articulate more accurately about goals and objectives. This module would also discuss the various types of objectives. In a bit to have clear understanding, this module would also cover the balanced scorecard approach to goal setting and critical success factors and key performance indicators. Now we will discuss the goals and objectives. Every organization irrespective of its size of operations, the market in which it operates and other factors needs to define the goals and objectives that it strives to achieve. Goals and objectives provide direction to the efforts that an organization makes for its survival and growth. Objectives are the desired ultimate end, results that are to be accompanied by an overall plan. The vision, mission and the business definition defines the philosophy of an organization to be adopted in the long run. The goals and objectives are set to achieve them. Goals denote what an organization strives to accomplish in a future period of time. Goals can be represented as a function of all the efforts put in today to have a specified future outcome. Goals address a broad category of financial and non-financial issues faced by the organization. A goal is a statement that serves as a purpose. They do not specify how the purpose can be achieved, but they do provide the direction towards which the organization should direct its efforts. The most essential characteristic that every goal should possess is that it should always be in tandem with the organization's mission and vision statements. Goals provide a framework for the owners to think conceptually and not be stifled in their creative thought process. Objectives are the attainable, quantifiable and measurable tools that specifically states how the goal shall be achieved within a specific time. The major difference between goals and objectives lies in their concreteness. Objectives are more concrete and specific in nature as against goals which are generalized and less structured. Objectives are the basic tools that underlie all the planning and strategic activities 
as students of strategic management, it is very crucial to understand the subtle difference between goals and objectives. The goal of a shampoo manufacturing company may be to establish itself as the most widespread shampoo maker in the country and the corresponding objective might be to sales by 5% annually and another objective might be to open up new branches in two states per year. Every organization has a set of prospective goals. A choice from amongst these goals needs to be exercised and this choice must be further elaborated and expresses as operational and measurable objectives. All organizations exist to achieve certain goals. To make these goals effective and efficient, objectives are important. Objectives have the following importance. Direction. Objectives help an organization to pursue its mission and vision. They provide needed guidelines for the organization. Objectives aim at providing direction to the organization such that all the efforts of the organization might work in a unified direction to accomplish the goals of the organization. Once objectives are framed, all activities are directed towards achieving such objectives. Without objectives, a manager would be expending useless efforts and creating havoc in the organization. Coordination. Objectives provide a stage for the organization to make a commitment to itself to work in a unified direction to achieve what it has to achieve for its employees, customers, the society and other stakeholders. Common objectives of organization trigger the efforts of managers and their subordinates to focus their efforts towards achieving the common goal. Standards for performance appraisal. Objective states the targets to be achieved in a given time period for the organizations. They become measuring points of the achievements or failures of organizations and thus lay down the standards against which organizational as well as individual performance would be measured. Motivation. Setting objectives does not only help employees get involved in setting the direction for the company but also helps employees feel motivated on an individual level. People at all level are motivated to achieve goals set through objectives. They ignite the enthusiasm and spirits of employees at all levels to work towards accomplishment of the set objectives. Balance scorecard approach to goal setting. The balance scorecard BSC is a strategic tool meant to measure organizational performance used by management to keep the way of implementation of undertakings by the administrative staff within its governor and to observe the significances rising from these activities. It is a strategic organization and administrative system that is used broadly to bring into line business activities to the visualization and strategy of the association, develop internal and external communications and observe organization performance besides strategic goals. The conception was established by Robert Kaplan and David Norton as a performance measurement agenda that added strategic non-financial performance procedures to traditional monetary metrics to do away with the unnecessary emphasis on short-term business objectives and to develop organizational presentation and give directors and managers a more balanced and improved view of organizational presentation. The balance record has changed from its early use as a modest performance dimension framework to a full strategic planning and management structure. It promotes a top-down method to performance management starting with the strategic committed being communicated through the organization done to operationally applicable targets. 
It offers a framework that not only offers performance measurements but helps organizers classify what should be done and restrained. It allows managers to truly perform their strategies. It provides reaction around both the internal corporate processes and external outcomes in order to constantly improve strategic presentation and results. Now we will discuss how the Camplan and Norton have described the innovation of balanced scorecard. The balanced scorecard retaining traditional financial measures but financial measures tell the story of post events an adequate story for industrial age companies for which investments in long term capabilities and customer relationships were not critical for success. These financial measures are inadequate, however, for guiding and evaluating the journey that information age companies must make to create future value through investment in customers, suppliers, employees, processes, technology and innovation. The BSA model requires that an organization be viewed from four perspectives. These are the learning and growth perspective. Their perspective lays emphasis on the learning aspect of an organization in order to cope up with the challenges of changes in the ever dynamic business environment. The organizations need to take up new responsibilities and its employees to familiarize new skills and information set. This perception comprises employee preparation and commercial cultural approaches associated to both to specific and corporate self-improvement. Kaplan and Norton underline that learning is more than training. It also comprises things like mentors and tutors within the society as well as the level of statement among workers that would let them to sort out the organization problems as and when required. It contains events such as moral, knowledge, employee suggestions, employee turnover etc. The second one is the business process perspective. This perspective refers to internal business processes. These processes are the mechanisms through which performance expectations are achieved. Measures based on this perspective allow the managers to know how well their business is running and whether its products and services conform to customer requirements to accomplish the organizational objectives and meet up the customer satisfaction. The key internal business processes must be identified and worked upon. Such measures include productivity index, efficiency levels and quality measures. The third is the customer perspective. The recent management philosophy has shown an increasing realization of the importance of customer focus and customer satisfaction in any business. This perspective is meant to measure the organizational ability to meet up its customer satisfaction level and provide quality goods and services. Poor performance from this perspective is thus a leading indicator of the declining customer base. Such measures include customer satisfaction measure, market share and customer loyalty. The fourth is the financial perspective. Kaplan and Norton do not disregard the traditional need of financial data. Timely and accurate check on finances of the organization should always be a priority. In fact, often there is more than enough handling and processing of financial data. This perspective takes into consideration the financial measures arising from the strategic intent of the organization. Such measures include earnings, revenues, return on capital and cash flow. The critical success factors CSF are management tools which are necessary for an organization to accomplish its mission. These are serious factor or an activity requisite for confirming the achievement of a company or an association. For example, 
a CSF for a positive IT project is user participation. The term was initially used in the context of data analysis and business analysis. The idea of CSFs was first introduced by D. Reynold Daniel in the 1960s. Later, it was popularized by John F. Rocker between 1979 and 1981 and has since been used in the implementation of strategies in business settings. Rocker defined CSF as the limited number of areas in which results, if they are satisfactory, will ensure successful competitive performance for the organization. They are the few key areas where things must go right for the business to flourish. It results in these areas as no adequate, the organization efforts for the period will be less than designed. The critical success factors are limited number of key variables or conditions or characteristics or variables that have a tremendous direct impact on success, effectiveness, efficiency and viability of an organization, program or project. They are the determinants of how effectively an organization meets in mission or the strategic goals or objectives of a program or a project. Organization must perform the activities associated with critical success factors at the highest possible level in order to meet its intended objectives and achieve competitive advantage. They are also called the key success factors KSF or key result areas KRA. As these factors are essential to the success of every organization, the organizations must strive to identify such factors and communicate these factors to all the levels involved in order to ensure that the organization is well focused and least efforts and resources are wasted on less important areas. By making CSFs explicit and communicating these with everyone involved, the organization can be kept on track towards common aims and goals. CSFs for an NGO might be number of donors, people served, volunteers, engaged, etc. While in the case of a restaurant, these might be customer satisfaction, food quality, market share, and employee turnover. It should be noted that CSFs are not measurable as such until they are complemented by key performance indicators. The key performance indicators is a business metric or measure used to evaluate critical success factors that are crucial to the success of an organization. The key in the KPIs is their important relationship with CSFs and thus to the vision of the organization. KPIs vary across the organizations. Business KPIs may be net revenue or a customer loyalty metric while government might consider unemployment rates as the KPI. Accordingly, the choice of KPIs depends upon a good understanding of organization's existence and what is important for the organization. What is important further depends on the department or the division measuring the performance. For instance, the KPIs for the finance division will differ from the KPIs assigned to sales. Performance indicators are routinely associated with performance improvement initiatives as the assessment of the state of business for the purpose of identification of performance indicators lead to identification of potential improvements. David Paramenter defined seven characteristics of effective KPIs after doing an extensive analysis and discussions with over 3,000 participants in the KPI workshops covering most organization types in both public and private sectors. These characteristics are 1. Non-financial. They are non-financial measures. 
timely. They are measured frequently, for example, 24 by 7 or daily or weekly. CEO focus, they are acted upon by the CEO and the senior management team. Simple, the staff understand the measure and the corrective action required to be taken. Team based, responsibility can be assigned to a team or a cluster of teams who work closely together in a unitary direction. Significant impact, the effect more than one of the organization's top CSFs and more than one balance to scorecard perspective. Limited dark side, they encourage appropriate action that is they have been tested to ensure they have a positive impact on performance. Selecting the right measures is crucial for the effectiveness of the organization. The matrix must be incorporated into the performance measurement system in such a way that it makes the individuals and the groups understand the manner in which their behavior and efforts are contributing to the accomplishment of overall corporate goals. The key stages in identifying KPIs are define a business process, find out the requirements for the business process, measure the results quantitatively or qualitatively and compare with the set standards, analyze the variances and improve processes or resources accordingly to achieve short term goals. Key performance displays are means to at times measure the presentations of organizations, their business elements, their detachment, departments and employees. Accordingly, KPIs are most frequently distinct in a way that is understandable, meaningful and accessible. A KPI can follow the SMART criteria. This means it has a specific purpose for the business. It is measurable to repeat to really get a value of the KPI. The defined norms have to be achievable. The improvement of a KPI has to be relevant to the success of the organization and finally it must be time phased which means the value or outcomes are shown for a predefined and relevant period. KPIs have obtained a great level of importance and popularity in the corporate world owing to their utility in helping an organization define and measure movements towards its objectives. Now we will discuss the strategic objectives and financial objectives differences. This section would cover the basic conceptual differences between the strategic and financial objectives and what are the plunge areas of the two types of purposes. Strategic objectives focus on the companies set on to stand and expand the organization's competitive strength and long term market position through creating customer value. Strategic objectives might include expanding market share, changing market position or undercutting a competitor's cost. The strategic objectives focus on winning additional market share surpassing key contenders on product quality or customer administration or product innovation achieving minor overall costs than opponents boosting the administration's reputation with consumers winning a stronger position in international markets exercising technological leadership gaining a sustainable competitive advantage and capturing attractive growth opportunities the strategic objectives must to be competitor focused and should reinforce the company's long term economic position. A company exhibits a strategic intent when it pursues strategic objectives and deploys its competitive efforts on accomplishing that objective. A small company may have strategic intent to dominate a market niche 
an upcoming company on the other hand may have strategic intent to overtake the market leaders. The strategic objectives includes acquiring a bigger market share, introducing new product design than its rivals, ensuring higher product quality than rivals and lower cost relative to key competitors. Financial purposes emphasizes on attaining acceptable effectiveness in a company's pursuit of its mission, long-term health and eventual survival. Financial objectives signal commitment to such consequences as good cash flow, solvency, earnings growth, an acceptable return on investment, dividend growth and stock price appreciation. This is done by Thomas Tickland. Financial objectives are used to measure strategic performance. The form, the basis for the measurement of level of accomplishment of strategic objectives. They seek to provide a matrices for the strategic objectives. For example, if the firm's strategic objective is to increase efficiency, the financial objective could be to increase return on capital employed. The examples of financial objectives may include growth in revenues, growth in earnings, wider profit margins, bigger cash flows, higher returns on invested capital, etc. Although there is no denying the fact that there are conceptual differences between the two, but the strategic objectives and financial objectives flow in a concerted manner in the working of an organization. Both concepts are mutually inclusive. A major strategic mode than the organization makes has financial implications and vice versa. Thus, both the strategic objectives and financial objectives must be set in tandem so that both facilitates in the accomplishment of the overall goal of the organization. Let us now recapitulate. Every organization, irrespective of its size of operations, the market in which it operates and other factors needs to define the goals and objectives that it strives to achieve. Goals and objectives provide direction to efforts that an organization makes for its survival and growth. Objectives are the desired ultimate end results that are to be accompanied by an overall plan, the vision, mission and the business definitions define the philosophy of an organization to be adopted in the long run. The goals and objectives are set to achieve them. Goals denote what an organization strives to accomplish in a future period of time. The balance to score card BSC is a strategic tool meant to measure organizational performance used by management to keep track of the execution of activities by the organizational staff within its control and to monitor the consequences arising from these actions. The BSC model requires that an organization be viewed from four perspectives. These are the learning and growth perspective, the business perspective, the financial perspective and the customer perspective. Critical success factors CSFS are administration tools which are essential for an organization to achieve its mission. It is a serious factor or an activity required for ensuring the success of a company or an organization. The strategic objectives focus on the company's intent to sustain and improve the organization's competitive strength and long-term market positions through creating customer value, while financial objectives focus on achieving acceptable profitability in a company's pursuit of its mission, long-term health and ultimate survival. Thank you.